Hey everyone, Reed Harris with Valor Ridge, and today I'm here with my brother who has had a milestone in his life because today he just bought his first firearm, which is a Smith & Wesson MMP uh, AR-15. And so I just want to have you guys and gals out there that are thinking about getting a firearm for the first time, or maybe you're thinking about getting another one. Um, this is my brother here, and he got his today, as we already said. So uh, why did you get that gun? What, what motivated you to do that? Um, I got this gun for home defense. I had to protect my family and my house. Okay, and you do have kids, right? Mm hmm Okay, and you never, this is your first gun, correct? Okay, so why did you choose a, a, a rifle, an AR-15? Uh, that's what you recommended. <laughs> okay, besides that, <laughs> what is it? You shot one before, right? Yeah, low recoil, um, high damage. High damage? A rifle is going to be high damage no matter what happens, right? Okay, so when you first bought this, what kind of questions did you have or what kind of things were confusing with you about uh, maintaining this rifle and, and that sort of thing? Uh, taking it apart, cleaning it, uh, price, um, what types of ammo to shoot, things like that. Okay, good deal. So the purpose of this video, folks, is to talk about when you first get a rifle from the factory, what do you have to do? What kind of things do you have to do to keep it functioning, to get it functioning, and to make sure that it works properly? So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do, folks, when it comes from the factory, there's all kinds of grease and oil and all kinds of solvents that they use at the factory uh, to put these guns together. So we're going to teach you how to get it going uh, so that it works the best for you, so that it shoots the best, shoots the most accurate for you. And the first thing that you need to do when you're going to clean your gun or get it ready from the factory is to make sure that it is unloaded. And I'm sure that the guy at the gun counter told you that it was unloaded, but we're going to verify, we're going to trust but verify. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to check the chamber. I'm looking for an empty chamber, and it is empty, and there's no magazine in. So what we're going to do is take it apart. First thing you need to do is take these pins down just like this, push in on them. Some of them may be a little bit more stiff. Some of them may be a little bit more loose, just depends. So separate the rifle just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this out, this bad boy out just like this, and we're going to pull out the parts just like that. If you've never taken an AR-15 apart before, there's all kinds of fun little parts that can get lost. Uh, the most no notorious of them all is, of course, the firing pin retaining pin. Now, you can use a round to get this out. Or you can use a screwdriver. You could also use a knife. I don't have any fingernails whatsoever, as I've already told you all in the previous video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this firing pin retaining pin out just like this. And I'm going to place it directly inside the charging handle so that it does not get lost. Then I'm going to take the firing pin out just like that, put that in there, rotate your cam pin 90 degrees, pull it out just like so, put that in there, and then just simply pull out the bolt. So we've got a disassembled upper receiver group as well as a bolt carrier group. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these patches and I'm just going to use my good old Hoppies, my trusty Hoppies number 9 right here, although you could use any gun cleaning solvent. If you're asking, Reed, what about this brand? What about this brand? Okay, use it, whatever. Just remove the grease. It's really not that hard. Put it in the freaking dishwasher and blow dry it. I don't really care. But we're going to use Hoppies because that's what I've been using since 1995. And it seems to work really well because my guns work. So we're going to wipe down all this grease just like this with a patch or an old t-shirt or whatever it is that you're going to use. Make sure we get the bolt face from the factory. There's a little, usually some little crud in there. And we're going to get rid of that. Wipe that down as well, that cam pin down. And I'm just using that Hoppies number 9 solvent, as I said. Firing pin, wipe that bad boy down as well. So just get that out of the way. Make sure there's no oils or any kind of machining fluid in there. And what I also like to do is I like to wipe down my bolt carrier group. And you may ask, well, Reed, why is this so shiny and clean right now? Because I already cleaned it earlier today for my brother. I'm just revisiting it for you right now. It's kind of like a dress rehearsal. i got to give the best to my family. And then you guys get what's also the best. But I'm just wiping this down just like that, making sure that we're wiping down all that stuff. Now here's an important part too. You really want to make sure that the upper receiver is also clean. And that's why I get in here with some patches or a cloth or anything like that. And we're going to swab all that stuff down, make sure we're getting all that grease and all that factory lube and oils and all that other machining fluid out of there. I'm just wiping it down, wiping it clean with that solvent. I don't care what you use, like I said, you know, ballast, ballast tall fans or frog loop fans or whatever. I don't really care what you use. Like I said, I use hoppies. Works great. Okay, so we got the upper receiver taken care of. Now we've got a whole other group here. We have the lower receiver. Now there's going to be other stuff involved here. There's going to be other things 
uh, that are in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my buffer to my uh, buffer and buffer spring. I'm going to get that out of there, pull that out just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my hammer and firing controls are all good. Take it off safe. And if you want to to uh, let release that, make sure your thumb is there, and then let it go forward so that you don't hurt the components. And I'm going to make sure I get all that grease and oil and stuff out of there, uh, just like this. Make sure it gets good. Good to go. Good. All right, so that one's taken care of. Now, what do we do after it has been degreased and everything? Well, just take some clean patches, wipe everything dry. Hey, if we're moving too fast for you, just hit the pause button or rewind. That's the beautiful part of technology is that you are in control of your experience. But I feel like Bob Ross of guns. I feel like I'm talking to a people painting and going slow but either way guys the point I'm trying to make here is just stay with me and if you're having trouble just pause it and work on the parts that I'm working on I'm just making sure that I'm wiping everything dry I'm wiping all that solvent and grease and oil off of there so that it's perfectly dry and and we'll go from there so just get your bolt as well make sure you get the bolt face crucial all that jazz wipe it down make sure it's clean and dry all clean and dry okay here's another important part now from the factory, what happens is that they will make the barrels, you know, the rifling, the grooves in the lands, and they'll still have machining fluid in there. So what I'll do is I'll take my bore snake and in a solvent, again, a solvent of your choice. It doesn't matter what it is. We're just trying to move it out. And what I'll do is I'll take this upper receiver and I'll either use a bore snake or a cleaning rod. All you traditionalists out there, I know you guys are cleaning rod fanatics, some of you. But uh, anyway, we're just going to punch the bore with a tool of your choice and we're gonna punch it through. I like to go through about four or five times. We're just getting all that stuff out of there. We're getting all that grease and machining fluid and whatever it is that they use at the factory, a thin lake, a coat of oil they may use to preserve it. We're just getting all that out of there. All right, folks, after we punch the bore and you've ran your bore snake or your cleaning rods and patches through there, now what we need to do is apply lubrication. Uh, different parts of the rifle do better with different parts of lubrication. For the firing controls, what I really like using is a thin oil. Like you can use the Hoppies or you could use Wilson's or you could use whatever. But we're going to use some kind of oil. And what I like to do is I like to put the parts on the hammer and on the sear. A very important thing that you're going to want to remember as well, folks, is that you're also going to want to get the safety as well. Because I have seen safeties. Uh, I have seen people have some pretty bad experiences with safeties. Uh, rusting in a jungle environment. Uh, I was in the jungle for over a month before uh, with an uh, M16 and the safeties did not do so well unless you had them oiled. So we want to make sure it's in there. So use oil on the fire controls. For everything else, I really, really, really like grease. If you live in colder climates, you could use a combination of oil and grease, but I really like a layer of grease, a lithium grease that you can buy at Walmart. And what I do is I'll put it on the bolt just like this, especially on the stem. If you want to hit the gas rings a little bit, that's cool. It makes it easier uh, for it to move and slide into. Just don't go crazy with it. But we want a visible layer of grease, just like you can see right there. I also hit that cam pin, just like this. That's a good one there. We want to make sure that that's lubricated. Leave the firing pin dry. <laughs> All right, leave the firing pin dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put some on the rails, just like this. And I'm going to put some on anywhere that slides, which is these parts of the bolts right here, the bolt right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to hit this rail. Make sure it's a good dose of lubrication because this will give you an issue. Just like that. Okay, good deal. Okay, now it's ready to be reassembled. So put the bolt in first. Now there's two holes. <laughs> one of them's going to go in, one of them's not. So when you take the cam pin, make sure you work it in and then rotate it. 90 degrees and then pull that bad boy out take your firing pin slide it in very important make sure that it gets seated all the way push that bad boy in all the way and then put your firing pin retaining pin in there pop it whip it pop it whip it all right we're good on that uh, to make things easier for y'all what I also like to do is I like to put the uh, charging handle I like to put a little bit of lubrication on that it just makes it easier it's not necessary it just makes it uh, move a little bit easier for all you guys out there that may want to do this, you don't have to do this. Uh, it just helps a little bit. What I'll do is I'll put a little bit of oil inside the upper receiver like that. And what I'll do is I'll spread it around 
uh, just like this. I'll spread it on the inside of there. You don't need to do this at all. You, you don't. This is not necessary. I just like to do it because it adds with a little bit more smoothness of the action. And as I said, just spread that, spread that around a little bit and make sure it's there. So once that's good, take your charging handle, put it all in there just like that. Take your bolt, bolt goes to the chamber, put it in there just like that and slide it forward. And then of course, uh, to make you guys life easier on this AR, these retaining pins are sometimes very, very, very difficult to manage. So what I would like to do is I like to put a little bit of, of grease inside the channel of those firing pins just like that. It will be the side facing you as you're firing the rifle. So put it inside that channel and that should make it a lot easier. If you want to put a little bit of oil on the outside of that, it never hurts to do that either. So after you oil the inside of the upper receiver, after you put a little bit of grease on that bolt, what I like to do is just put a little bit of oil on my palm like that. And what I'll do is I'll use the uh, buffer spring and I'll get some oil going on that just to make it easier uh, to move and charge. And what I will do is I will put it back in just like so. See it just like that. Snap them together. And what I'm going to do now is function check the rifle. So charge it. Make sure it's on safe. Try to fire. It should not fire. I'm going to put it on fire. Press and hold the trigger. Charge it. Release the trigger. Try to fire again again release the trigger put it on safe close the ejection port cover you've got a functional rifle but the most important part of this process is going to be after you make sure that your gun is clean and lubricated and ready to go from the factory we have to load it so all I'm going to do tap tug and load it up it is now loaded and ready to go for home defense uh, what I've got here on here is a sling and of course we have just ordered a light uh, you can get any lights. I'm going to put a link in that description box below for the light, which one I use on, uh, which I would recommend on this particular rifle. So with a white light, a sling, a loaded gun, and you're going to be ready for action, provided that it's zeroed, and I've got a video about that as well. So now you got the gun. It's clean, lubricated, direct from the factory. It's loaded up. Um, what's the next thing you got to do? I'm probably going to head down to Tennessee and get some training. Yeah, Tennessee, <laughs> right? There's a couple. There's a couple of things that you need to do before it. You need to know how to learn what you're doing, guys. There's a lot of people out there that have guns uh, that, that really need to learn how to use this stuff, and it's pretty important. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got an AR, if you just bought one, if you bought one and haven't ever shot it yet, and you still got the rounds in the shoebox in the closet or whatever, go ahead and take a look at this video. Hopefully you found value. If you did, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Facebook. That link's down below. And if you want to learn how to use that rifle, come on out to Valor Ridge, and we'll teach you how to do just that. Is Reed Hendricks of Battle Ridge reminding you the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.